It was the former capital of Myanmar before the country was colonized by the British. According to the reports in the state-run media, the statue is roughly about 24.7 meter high and weighs over 5,000 tons. A report published on Friday in the state-run Myanmar Alim Daily newspaper said Vice General Suin, a deputy prime minister of the military government, told that the consecration ceremony of the Buddha image would be held on August the 1st, a day after the latest declaration of the emergency rule will be expired. All right, we're going to take another short break here on the program, but please do stay with us. We have more updates for you, this time from all around the world, when we return here on the Sea Morning Show. We're delivered quality news from a different perspective. The latest economic and business updates. Get a closer look at inspiring stories to lift your spirits. Sport news from both Indonesia and abroad. Underway in Indonesia. I'm super happy, so thank you very much. We present to you selected stories from Southeast Asia and around the world. I want to thank you for joining us on the three-hour news show on C Today. The three-hour news show every day at 4 p.m. only on C Today. 16 negara siap berkompetisi. Ionex Sunrise Pembangunan Jaya Raya Junior International Grand Prix 2023. Di 18 sampai 23 Juli 2023, live di UC Sports, Indie Home TV. We're sitting down with Brian Domani. Welcome to the program. Thank Thanks you for having me. me. Was this character similar to you in some ways, your real life? Me, Ed? Yes. Uh, no, not at all. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not as zen as him. <laughs> I'm not as wise as him. Yeah, maybe the similarities. Uh, we have the same face. <laughs> the, the taste and the, and the flavor and the Or you all do one too. Yeah. yeah. But after this, I will do uh, another show and I'm sorry. <laughs> suka ini tapi walaupun punya uang belum tentu bisa punya walaupun punya uang belum tentu bisa punya yes <laughs> Asian flavors is gaining more popularity around the world in the last decade personally love this not just because it's familiar for our palate but because the airiness the textures of the UTO it's it's completely different when baguette So with, with those appetites and with those pleasure-driven people, Manteng is a very special place for restaurant. We're back here on the Sea Morning Show. Time for some world updates. Intense protests erupted in Israel on Saturday prior to a crucial vote on the judicial overhaul that had been proposed by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's far-right government. Over a hundred former security leaders came together to write a letter urging Netanyahu to stop the implementation of this legislation. A sea of Israeli flags converged on Jerusalem on Saturday evening when thousands of demonstrators entered their last leg of the four-day and nearly 70 kilometers or 43-mile trek from Tel Aviv to the Israeli parliament. 
They join forces with other protesters on a bridge into Jerusalem to complete their journey with plans to camp outside the parliament ahead of Monday's vote. Over 100 former Israeli security leaders, including retired army chiefs, police commissioners, and head of intelligence agencies, signed a letter to Netanyahu on Saturday, blaming him for compromising Israel's defense and urging him to halt the legislation. Thousands of reservists who make up the backbone of Israel's armed forces also announced recently that they will not serve if the legislation passes. This move has also received support from security leaders. The grassroots protest movement has reached a fever pitch after seven months of the most sustained and intense demonstrations in Israel's history. Tensions flared yet again in Iraq on Saturday following a series of recent protests in Europe involving the desecration of the Quran. Hundreds of protesters attempt to storm Baghdad's heavily fortified Green Zone that houses foreign embassies and the seat of Iraq's government early on Saturday. It took place following reports that an ultranationalist group burned a copy of the Quran in front of the Iraqi embassy in the Danish capital Copenhagen the previous day. The protest came two days after those who were angered by the planned burning of the Quran in Sweden stormed the Swedish embassy in Baghdad. <laughs> Security forces pushed back protesters who blocked the Jumhuria Bridge leading to the Green Zone on Saturday, preventing the crowd from reaching the Danish embassy. Aside from burning Swedish and LGBTQ flags, some protesters chanted anti-Western slogans while holding posters of former deputy chief of Iran-backed popular mobilization forces Abu Mahdi al-Muhandi. Al-Muhandi was killed alongside former head of Iran's elite Quds force, General Qasim Soleimani, in a U.S. airstrike near Baghdad's International Airport in January 2020. Iran has since vowed to avenge the killing of its top commander. المجتمع الدولي ونطالب السويد تحديدا وكذلك دول أخرى عملت مثل هذا العمل المشين إلى تقديم اعتذار للعالم الإسلامي أجمع We move on to Russia where the Russian military said on Saturday that the journalist from state media Ria Novosti had died after being injured in Ukraine According to a spokesperson for the group of Russian forces in southern Ukraine, Vadim Astafiev, four journalists were hit by cluster munition in Zaporizhia. He said that one of the journalists died during evacuation while others were in moderate and stable conditions. The Ria Novosti State News Agency also confirmed that one of their reporters, Rostislav Zuravlev, was killed in Ukraine. В результате удара ВСУ кассетными боеприпасами получили ранения различной степени тяжести четыре журналиста. Журналисты были оперативно эвакуированы в полевые медицинские учреждения Минобороны России, где им оказывается квалифицированная медицинская помощь. Во время эвакуации журналист информационного агентства РИА Новости Ростислав Журавлев от полученных ранений в результате разрыва кассетного суббоеприпаса скончался. Состояние здоровья других журналистов средней тяжести стабильное. Moving on, UN Political Affairs Chief Rosemary De Carlo said on Friday in a briefing to the Security Council that the Russia's bombardment of Ukrainian ports along the Black Sea could have far-reaching impacts on global food security. The attacks followed Russia's decision on Monday to effectively end the Black Sea Initiative, the UN brokered court that facilitated Ukrainian grain and foodstuffs to be shipped to international markets at a time of spiraling global food prices and rising hunger. The new wave of attacks on Ukrainian ports risks having far-reaching impacts on global food security, in particular in developing countries. Furthermore, as we have repeatedly stated, attacks against civilian infrastructure may constitute a violation of international humanitarian law.
any risk of conflict spillover as a result of a military incident in the Black Sea, whether intentional or by accident, must be avoided at all costs, as this could result in potentially catastrophic consequences to us all. The Indian media reported on Thursday that the country's government has banned the export of non-Basmati white rice to lower domestic prices. Now, this decision has made the public worried about global food supplies. India accounts for 40% of global rice exports, making it the world's largest supplier. Late monsoon rains have damaged crops and raised concerns of a production shortfall. Meanwhile, traders claim that the ban will unlikely lower prices at home and instead will drive prices up in countries that import grain from India. Meanwhile, Russia came under pressure at the United Nations Security Council on Friday where they were urged to revive Ukrainian grain shipments amid a global food crisis concern. Several developing countries also warned about the impact of cutting off Ukrainian grain shipments which has already caused higher wheat prices. UN humanitarian chief Martin Griffiths told the council that a record of 362 million people in 69 countries are in need of food assistance, amounting to 55 billion US dollars. There's a huge demand in the domestic market also, so it will not let the price go down. The banning, it will affect the prices in the um, in importing countries, yes they will not be able to get the good amount of rice from the world because India is a major supplier of this rice. I don't know. Algerian President Abdel Majid Tavon said that Algeria and China have reported each other for a common cause which leads to an enduring friendship between the two countries. Algeria and China were brought together 65 years ago due to the common cause of opposing imperialism and colonialism while seeking national independence and liberation. Tavon praised Xi Jinping for his strong leadership in guiding and developing a country with a population of 1.4 billion people. China and Algeria also agreed to work together to fight extremist terror organizations inside their borders. Now, the two sides have also supported other countries in their security efforts, including Somalia and Sudan. Algeria, which has successfully battled domestic terrorism, has long been interested in supporting its neighbors in their fight against terror since former colonial power France retreated from regional counterterrorism efforts. Tabon arrived in Beijing after a state visit to Russia last month, and during the opportunity, he appealed to President Vladimir Putin to support Algeria in becoming a member of BRICS, a group of emerging markets com comprised of Brazil, Russia, India, China, and also South Africa. صح كان الصين أول دولة خارج العالم العربي اللي تعترف بالحكومة المؤقتة للجمهورية الجزائرية. أيامها كان كان صدى عالمي كبير لأن أول مرة الجزائر تخرج من نطاق الضيق نتاع اللي اللي كانت فيه وعطت للجزائر الحرب. حرب التحرير الجزائري مقاومة الجزائرية أعطتها يعني حجم بحجم الصين ثم وصلنا المسيرة مع استقناء أصدقائنا الصينيين والآخرين تحكم Now let's move to North Korea that is currently preparing for a war anniversary which has always been celebrated differently than in any other country the 17th anniversary of the Automistich, which halted fighting in the three-year-long Korean War, is set to be celebrated on July 27. However, peace has not still been reached, meaning the Korean Peninsula still remains divided. Locals were organized to visit and pay their respects in the weeks ahead of the anniversary at a war cemetery on the outskirts of Pyongyang. The location itself was set up and inaugurated for the 60th war anniversary 10 years ago. North Korea officially calls the conflict the Victorious Fatherland Liberation War and says that it was started by the United States. Meanwhile, most historians outside North Korea say that North Korean leader Kim Il-sung started the war and failed to achieve his objective of taking over the southern part of the Korean peninsula. 
Additionally, the giant Korean War Museum, located in Pyongyang, was reopened following renovation and extension efforts in 2013 to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the armistice. 말 그대로 법용총과 원자탄의 대결이라고 할수 있는 지난 초 개방 전쟁의 위대한 승리는 희세의 천출명장이신 위대한 수련님의 강렬한 신념과 의지, 탁월한 군사적 예지와 비범한 연군 수리 아나운 세계적인 기적이었습니다. Now let's take our attention to Japan, where Japanese protesters gathered outside the Prime Minister office on Friday to voice their opposition to Japan's plan of dumping nuclear contaminated water from the Fukushima nuclear power plant into the sea. And in spite of serious concerns that had been voiced by the public, the Japanese government, along with the Tokyo Electric Power Company, remained resolute in their decision to go ahead with the plan in August. Chris, their concern about the inherent dangers of the discharge plan and said that radioactive elements will not easily disappear. They also said that the plan would be a catastrophic mistake. Protesters said the livelihoods of fishermen and others who work at sea are also at stake. According to them, the Japanese government and TEPCO also promised to not go ahead with the plan unless they have the understanding of all stakeholders. However, they have turned a deaf ear to public opposition, which is a flagrant breach of their promise. で、all right, after a quick break, we'll have Paul start to bring us some sports updates. So what do you have for us today, Paul? Well, it is the middle of the weekend. We have some results from the 2023 IBL final. We also have a preview of the upcoming Formula One race. All that and more to come when we return here on the Sea Morning Show. Stay tuned. Sports is up next. We're delivered quality news from a different perspective. The latest economic and business updates. Get a closer look at inspiring stories to lift your spirits. Sport news from both Indonesia and abroad. Underway in Indonesia. I'm super happy, so thank you very much. We present to you selected stories from Southeast Asia and around the world. I want to thank you for joining us on the three-hour news show on C Today. The three-hour news show every day at 4 p.m. only on C Today. Minta dong tiga hari semua artis yang menurut tuh paling bagus bikinin buat partai gua. Sebagai profesional dan dibayar di depan sih gua nggak masalah. Wow, kata lu gua nggak masalah kenapa <laughs> sekarang minta di depan? Ah kalau daripada bayar belakang lagi lagi kan nggak. <laughs> Pak Polo sekarang kenapa bersih? Iya. Yeah. Ya bersih lah sudah nggak make lagi. <laughs> Salah satunya yang Jaksel yang gua beneran ikutin cuman. Gue pernah pakai sepatu fans patah kotak 6 tahun udah itu doang. Sisanya gua nggak ada. <laughs> ada lu tuh ada ya. Jumpa lagi di konten ngobrolin tentang Nusantara. Boleh nggak ngeliatin ya? Aku juga boleh ngeliatin kamu. Iya. Yeah. Dua pertanyaan ini akan menentukan di antara kalian siapa yang harus mengakhiri karir bermusiknya. <laughs> Wah, aduh. Ah, gila. Baru pertama ada peserta di sini nguap. Saking membosankannya kan acara ini. Tes COVID, tes COVID. <laughs> ah, ini. Ya. Good afternoon, you are watching the Sea Today updates, bringing you the latest update from around the world. May Day usually brings both protests and celebration rallies, marking Labor Day. Roshima Sahayasi met privately with Peruvian President Dina Boluarte, in addition to the public activities with Gervasi. More than 7,000 members of the armed forces are to take part in the ceremony. Welcome back to Sportline, ladies and gentlemen, where we bring you guys some of the sports that you guys can go play here in Indonesia. You, know, you don't have to be good with your foot. <laughs> you can just dribble the ball and just throw it to the full ball. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. The beauty 
and the excitement of being there. Indescribable to lose such an iconic, historical, and magnificent. Let's take a look around, shall we? Ah, uh, come on in. We found them. Where people come and go. A cup of tea, a perfect way to end your day. Come see the beauty, only on Sea Indonesia. Welcome back to the Sea Morning Show, everyone. It is now 7 in the a.m., and it's time for your first sports update of the morning. And as mentioned before the break, we are going to preview this weekend's F1 race in Budapest as Lewis Hamilton, surprise, surprise, has secured his first Formula One Grand Prix pole position since 2021 after defeating world champion Max Verstappen by just 0.003 seconds in the very final lap of the session in Budapest, Hungary on Saturday. Lewis's Mercedes teammate George Russell started from 18th place after being hampered by traffic just before his final lap in Q1. It will be an all McLaren second row with Lando Norris just ahead of Oscar Piastri. Verstappen looked on course to take pole position in the race as he has done all season long or most of the season and it would have marked his seventh in a row after going fastest on the first run in the final qualifying session. However, it was Lewis Hamilton who took the final lap, snatched victory on a track where he has enjoyed eight victories throughout his impressive career. I've lost my voice from shouting so much in the car. <laughs> it's amazing that feeling. Um, I am so feel so grateful to be up here because the team have worked so hard. We've been pushing so hard over this time to finally get a pole. It just feels like the first time. So, um, and a big, big, Thanks to the crowd here. We have such an amazing crowd every year here in Budapest. I didn't expect coming today that we'd be fighting for pole. So when I went into that last run, I gave it absolutely everything. I was, there was nothing left in it. Well, we haven't seen Hamilton in the front row in pole position for quite some time. Now, what has changed in Budapest? Well, for one, F1 made some changes to the qualifying format as part of an alternative tire allocation trial where only hard tires were allowed to be used in Q1, medium tires in Q2, and soft tires in Q3, which yielded a competitive qualifying session. Lando Norris broke into the 1 minute 16 second mark with his opening gambit uh, to sit atop of the order, but he had his hopes dashed when Verstappen threw down the gauntlet going just a bit faster. Hamilton then separated the pair that had locked out the front row at Silverstone with 1 minute 16.738 seconds, showcasing the potential that Mercedes had shown in glimmers over the course of the weekend. When it came to the second and final series of runs, Verstappen's first sector had been less impressive than his first. Despite uh, improvement in the second part of the lap, he fell short of his earlier time and left him vulnerable to an attack from the behind. Uh, meanwhile, Norris got close, just falling short after setting up a 1 minute 16 second point 694, but Hamilton was up on Verstappen's delta by the close of the second sector. And although the Mercedes appeared to step out of line in the final couple of corners, the seven-time world champion held on to claim his first pole since 2021. We mentioned McLaren's got the entire second row. Zhou Guan Yu was another driver to star in qualifying as Alfa Romeo put hit their car onto fifth spot in today's grid. Charles Leclerc was sixth fastest ahead of Valtteri Bottas, who was just over half a tenth away from his Chinese teammate, as Fernando uh, Alonso was just 0.001 seconds behind Finn to take eighth. And finally, Sergio Perez claimed ninth on the grid, having broken a streak of five races without a Q3 appearance. And Nico Hülkenberg rounds out the top ten, having once again dragged his Haas into the top ten shootout. We can't wait for the race today. We'll report the highlights and results tomorrow morning. In the meantime, we've got other sports news to get to. The first batch of delegations on Saturday expressed great expectations for the coming days after checking in at the Athletes' Village for the upcoming Chengdu 2021 Summer World University Games in Sichuan, China. Ten officials from Germany were the first to arrive 
followed by delegations from Brazil, Japan, the United States, and Estonia on Saturday. Many delegation members said that besides their excitement for the games, they are also looking forward to enjoy the beautiful scenery and spicy dishes available in the historical city. It is estimated that more than 20 overseas delegations will be arriving at the village on Saturday. The long-awaited 31st International University Sports Federation Summer World University Games, known as Universiad, will be held in Chengdu, China from July the 28th to August the 8th with participants from around 170 countries and regions. Move on to some football related.